Now then, are we all sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Once upon a time, but like specifically in the early 90s, there was this absolute mad lad called Vince Perry. He was a businessman and a father in the USA, and his job was to basically just cut about like an absolute mad lad. One day, he watched his son play a game on his NAS. But it wasn't just one game. It was lots and lots of games in one cartridge. Vince Perry thought, wow, all of those games on one cartridge? The makers of this must really be bringing in the cash. I'd like a slice of that pie. How can I, a businessman who generally just cuts about like an absolute mad lad, use this information to my advantage? I could have my own games made. 52 of them, on one cartridge, completely legally. Oh, you're talking again. I must have forgotten to take my medication. Are you guys all actually there? Ah yes, the legend that is the Action 52, the multi-cart to end all multi-carts. By conversely being the worst multi-cart ever, multi-carts are something that, despite the strength of companies like Nintendo going mental on you if you mention their name on a monetized video, still exist today. You absolutely can get legal multi-carts, by the way. Nintendo even did them for the NES. But the market was, and still is, rife with bootleg hacky multi-carts. You'll usually see them packaged with Famiclone consoles, which are knock-off NES consoles made specifically to play these bootleg cartridges. Here's a Famiclone that I have. Look, look at how flappy it is. I don't know why this makes me laugh so much. I think I love it more than my actual PlayStation 2. Famiclones are usually built to look very much like a real popular console, and sometimes like my pleasingly named player station have shameless bootleg names. Check this out. A poly station. A new Tendo. <laughs> a good boy. Ooh, a dream gear. The reason I'm showing you this piece of crap, aside from the fact that I just wanted to show it off, is that these things often come with multi-carts. Bootleg hacked ones. Like this, which looks totally legit. Ooh. Whoa, look at this one! That's insane! 999999, whatever that is if you call it by its actual number, games in one! Good God, I'm going to be playing this for the rest of my life. Better get some takeaway in. Oh wait, I forgot, I have this one too, which was sent to me by Vocabra. I haven't been able to set it up yet, but I just like looking at it and stroking it. Anyway. All right, look, I'm already angry, so I'll just cut the joke short. Yes, it's just a handful of games listed nine 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 times the deception is real yeah i actually checked all the way up to nine 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 and it's just the exact same listing again and again and again and again why even say there's that many if there's only like five games why would you even say it has more games than have ever been made on it the disappointment for kids picking up a cartridge like this must have been immeasurable at age 10, buying a cartridge that promised 9999 games, only to find there's actually only about four, would be the sole spark that I would have needed to become a serial killer. This cartridge is responsible for serial killers. Probably. You're accessing the same game every time. It's not a different part of the memory just because it's being clicked from a different location. Kind of like if you had a web page with a hundred million links on it, they all go to the same photo of me having a breakdown. But there's something even worse that the makers of these bootleg multi-carts are responsible for. Action 52. In an interview with the Miami Herald in 1993, Vince Perry said that he got the idea from his son's 40-in-1 multi-cart. It's unclear exactly which multi-cart that was, because there's a 42-in-1 multi-cart with a load of ripped ROMs on. Couldn't find a 40-in-1. But there's the Supervision 52-in-1. And take a look at the menu screen. You're going to be seeing that again. I wonder if this is actually the multi-cart that Perry was talking about in the interview. So, seeing a way to make some easy cash, Vince Perry got together a team of four young developers and sent them off to learn how to use an NES dev kit in about a week. Literally. And then it was nose to the grindstone. Get 52 games made and packed into an NES cartridge in three months. 
Go on, lads, off you go. Now, I don't have a physical copy of the Action 52 cartridge because pretty much nobody does. It's mega rare. It was mostly found in video rental stores at the time of its release, but you could send off for it, I think, and it will cost you about $199. Well, I mean, that works out to less than $4 a game. Cheap. This is totally not taking advantage of parents who don't know any different. Thing is, you've probably already seen Angry Video Game Nerd's review of this thing since it peeks out at pretty much every SEO term, so I won't spend all the rest of the video just telling you it's crap. You already know that it's crap. And there's 52 games, so I'm not going to review each one in depth because I might die. So I'm just going to breeze through and linger a bit on the ones that really stand out to me for one reason or another. This does take into account the games that don't normally work, by the way, because yes, the Action 52 was released with two of the games not functional. Jigsaw doesn't work normally, and neither does Alfred and the Fetuk. However, they do work in an emulator, which is a relief for me, because I would love to know what a Fetuk is, just in case I'm missing out on some kind of mad pervy kink that I didn't know about. So let's take a look at some of the shining examples of top quality gaming we have on offer here. All right, let's da- oh, hang on a minute. <clears throat> All right, let's dance. The intro tune is It Takes Two? You know the song from 1988? Why? Am I supposed to be playing this with another person? Make your selection now. Hey, baby Pac-Man, do you want to play this with me? Oh, you're busy. Never mind. I've got no idea why this was the song that was chosen to sample. You can guarantee it wasn't taken with permission. But all of the games on the Action 52 are technically two-player. All of them let players compete for points by having them play each level in every game in turns. The one game that is literally two-player is also only two-player. Game number one, Fire Breathers. Two dragons, played by you, here, and your friend in player two. Or in my case, nobody. I'm a mess you up anyway. Bodied. I win. Again, and again, and again. Well, game one and I am already depressed. On top of, you know, the depression that I have normally. Double depressed. <laughs> Look at this, I'm owning this guy. Kind of a shame, really, because I do like the sprites in this one. And believe me, it gets far worse from here. Like, holy hell, you have no idea what you're about to see. This is where we're starting, and it's all downhill now. Buckle up, lads. Oh, God, what the hell's in this? Empty entire bottle into tank and drive as normal. Oh, it's for my car. And the game select screens are looking very familiar now, aren't they? Well, Action 52 went through a couple of prototypes before actually going to press. And the prototype game select screens are exactly the same as the Supervision 52 in one. I think we've just found out why Active Enterprises went with the arbitrary number of 52 for the number of games on this cart. I mean, that is my brand of laziness. You know, when your laziness causes you to have to do even more work? I'm impressed. Uh, I kind of like that, the fact that the Action 52 was meant to be a legal rip-off of an illegal rip-off. Because <laughs> I am easily amused. In the actual released version, they didn't even bother changing the fact that the cursor in the original Supervision cart always starts on game number 5. There you go, that's a bit of info that AVGN didn't give you in his video. That's like, well, literally the only thing I have up on him. You know, aside from the fact that my jokes are less scatological and more penis-based. If you can call that a one-up, I mean, everyone has different tastes in humour. But I am not about to empty my bowels over a Jaguar CD. Not until I have to pay the bills by opening an OnlyFans. Game 2, Star Evil. Well, that's a dick move. Frame 1, smash into something. How are you supposed to know when playing this the first time, unless you've got reflexes fast as all arse? By the way, space shooter where it's unclear what you can and can't fly over, and there's these things. Good. Cheers, mate. Ta. Game 3. Illuminator. Game 4. G-Force... For good? Or G-Force? I think it's supposed to be G-Force Fighter. Does the G stand for garbage? Or get to absolute f 
work. Like I said, I'll be here forever if I take too much time on each game, but look at that enemy and tell me it doesn't look like a dildo. Look me in the eye and tell me that. D do it! Game 5. Ooh, a title screen. Wow! Oh, I've just remembered I hate the sight of mucus. The reason this one got a title screen might be because it was going to be part of a big fancy competition. Winners would be entered into a prize draw if they sent off a code that's revealed when Ooze is completed. And it was a big money prize too, including US scholarship money. Problem is, the game is impossible to finish. Not even because it's too difficult, because it crashes at the end of level 2. Although yes, it is also too difficult. <coughs> oh. Oh, I can't stop thinking that all the green stuff is supposed to be mucus and he's jumping around it. <coughs> this is the first platform game of a few on the Action 52 and they're all similar, so I'm just going to complain about all the things wrong with them right away. First up, our guy here jumps like this and he moves like this. No comment needed. But there's a really specific way that you have to jump in the Action 52. If you press jump and the direction you want at the same time, he ain't going nowhere, sunshine, apart from up, while not moving his legs at all. <laughs> you have to get used to pressing the jump button, quickly letting go of it, and then pressing the direction button immediately afterwards. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> but okay, you know, I, I can live with that. It's fine, my brain should be able to overwrite two decades worth of schema from playing functional platforming games just so I can jump across a hole in this shitty button pressy way. My guy here has a gun for him to shoot these adorable bastards with. These drops of snot minding their own business. Ah! <laughs> You can't kill this thing by shooting it, and like I said, just jumping over the enemies is very hard, so already it's the most lethal enemy we have encountered in these first five games. A droplet of water is the most lethal enemy so far in Action 52. Does this guy even have a name? Let's check the instruction book. Avoid the ooze. Don't know why I expected much, to be honest. Oh god, in the second level the mucus has blood in it. Get to the next game before I throw up, because the designers of Action 52 will probably use what comes out of me to design a new level. Silver Sword. Hey, I like the music in this one, but that's the only reasonable part of this. This guy is supposed to be in a top-down view, but if that's the case then what is happening to his limbs? Look at this enemy. What? What is that? What the shit is that? What is it with the enemies moving so fast out of nowhere? Also, this guy doesn't use a sword in a normal way. Instead, he throws it. This guy went mental mall ninja and bought a load of throwing knives and he's just rampaging in a field of cabbage now. Honestly, just leave him to it. He'll go back home as soon as Reddit's servers are back up. By the way, the music? Stolen. Yeah. From Activision's Music Studio, written by Ed Bogas, and called Isle Dance. Not the only tune nicked from there either. I think we can bet on any of the decent music being stolen from Activision. Critical Bypass. Ah, my eyes! Ah, my ears! Oh my god, how was this music composed? Did the developer just smash their head repeatedly on the keyboard? Make it stop! Jupiter Scope. Are those... flaming condoms? Yeah, no, I, I, yes. Good god, someone get Planned Parenting funded because people in this city have got so many STDs they are apparently setting condoms on fire. If you have a penis, the last thing you should be thinking about is sex when your junk is so toxic it's able to light up latex. Also, what happened to the moon on this level? Did it explode? Alfredo. Or Alfred in the Fetic? Here it is, it's one of the games that you can't play on the actual physical cartridge. And what can I say? These people were missing out. Because I mean, look at this. 
Alfredo here is jumping around in the world's biggest kitchen and he's really got himself into some trouble here. There's some macaroni going absolutely mental and he slings a pan around like this. Oh, that's gonna help. Is this guy drunk? He's a chef in a very obviously big restaurant, so yeah, actually he is probably hammered. If you get upset by grammar, just take a look at what it's called in the instruction book. Ah, the possessive apostrophe. More abused than a non-stick pan. Just get a metal knife right in there and rustle that stir fry up. And there's a lot of knives in this kitchen. I don't know why Alfredo doesn't just slit his own throat. I f***ing would, this is awful. Now here's a lovely little factlet, because this game and the later game Jigsaw didn't work on the released cartridges. Active Enterprises actually started putting a flyer in the game box saying that if you complete the game Ooze, then you will unlock the two missing games. I am not even joking. The flyer says Ooze is secretly connected to the two games and that's how you get to them, which is one, bollocks, and two, not even possible because you can't get past level two in Ooze. Gotta hand it to them. That is kind of appalling behaviour. Business. When I was little, I would live for secret levels in video games. It makes me so sad to think of all the kids who read that insert and then spent hours, days, trying to find those two missing games. The two games that they had paid for and were supposed to be included by default. It's not action 50 plus two maybe if you can work out how to get to them. And of course, it was a big fat lie. Even if Ooze didn't crash, there wasn't a secret way to get to Jigsaw and Alfredo. Pure scam. Operation Moon, or Operation Full Moon. Oh, see, I told you, I told you they would make a level out of vomit. Operation Full Moon, Operation Full of Sick Moon, Celestial Body of Chunder, Look at this, it's like the floor of an emergency room. We can't have people with open wounds in here. Someone call cleaning. Get Robert down here with his little trolley. Oh, he quit? Ah, oh, don't blame him. Oh, and it's another game where you spawn right into death if you don't move instantly. Give me back the guy jumping around on mucus. I've been desensitized. Thanks to Action 52, I could easily get a job cleaning up sewer pipes with one hand and eat a sandwich in the other which is probably going to be useful for me in the near future, given YouTube's algorithms. Damn busters. Good God. What, what is this? Why? Dear God, why? Thrusters. Oh, God. How are we only on the 12th game? I'm already so exhausted, I can't think of an innuendo joke for the name of the game. Haunted Hill, game number 13. Unlucky for some. And us, apparently. You're a woman whose centre of gravity is clearly her breasts, judging from how she walks. Get a decent bra, love. Speaking as someone whose breasts are so big, they have their own orbit. I don't even know who half of these things belong to. Also, her hair does this dramatic swish when she shoots her gun. I love my game characters with a touch of herbal essences. What is it with Action 52 games killing you at the start? And by that thing? What is that? It's like a Pac-Man ghost that failed the audition. This one is tough, mostly because you've got things flying at you from both sides and you can't crouch or shoot at an angle so you're just frantically jumping about just to survive. I didn't even realise this when I was writing the script at first, but when I played it again to get the footage, I realised she's not shooting arrows, she's shooting crucifixes. The power of Christ compels you, bitch. I've got my crucifix gun and I'm throwing out the pain of Jesus like it's a t-shirt from a cannon. Who hired this lass? Let the ghosts keep this place, I say. Especially this guy. He can have it. I, can't, I can't stop being equal parts amused and horrified by it. Chill out. No, you chill out. I'm so angry, anything I touch right now is gonna burst into flames. I'm off to the pharmacy to touch some condoms and throw them on a city. Do you want anything? I'll grab you a push pop. Do you want a push pop? I'll get you a push pop. Wow, those do not look like snowflakes. One of the great things about my job is that I get to say sentences that normally would be frowned upon, like this one. I have never seen something that looks equal parts like a swastika and a sphincter. And now I have. Fall damage? Really? I'll piss off. Next. 
Sharks. Yeah, sometimes. Mostly just swimming around in this one area, waiting for sharks. This looks a lot like the Jaws game by LJN, doesn't it? I wonder if they stole the idea, which is hilarious, because that game is crap too. Also, why are these sharks breakdancing? Megalonia. These spaceships look like a load of random shapes slapped together. I feel like I'm playing No Man's Sky. Yo, yo, my dude, how much are you wanting to trade for your ship that literally looks like an arse floating through space? Oh, and also, does it have plenty of storage for all the stuff that I pick up and have no idea what to do with until after I've sold it all, at which point it turns out I needed it for a plot progression quest? This one does have boss battles at the end of the levels. That is, if the boss decides to show up at all. Must have been busy doing anything else. French Baker. Now, I have no idea why this chef's nationality has anything to do with anything, unless this is literally how the French keep their kitchens. Much like Alfredo, our guy or girl or whatever he is, he's having a hard time keeping all the food from growing legs and rampaging around. Come on, dude, this is exactly why you have to keep the kitchen Gordon Ramsay clean. One time I was so depressed I didn't clean up my kitchen for more than a month and then bagels and baguettes and that grow legs and they start running around. Hey, Jason. Hey, you gotta start paying some rent, dude. Come on. Look at those blood-stained knives on the wall. Guess Alfredo went ahead and slit his own throat after all. Once again, don't blame him. Is that an envelope? HMRC send out those envelopes when you miss one tax payment. They're bloodthirsty bastards. Atmos Quake. Another space shooter? Come on! Jason, you can't pay the rent in yeast. That's like if I tried to pay my rent with dandruff. Which doesn't work, by the way. If you bump into anything at all, you explode. Including these TV aerials in space. Do aliens watch TV? My money's on TLC. Look at how many scrolling shooters there are just on the first page. What pisses me off is that my favourite genre of game is top-down space shooter, so I'm being really done dirty here. Can I have some sympathy, please? Oh, come on, guys. All right, come on. Page two. Meong. What? Move around an A52 logo and hope it doesn't explode. There's no clues to show what squares might blow you up, you know, like in Minesweeper. It's pure luck or memory if you play it enough, which nobody who respects themselves would do. Even I respect myself too much for that, although I'll be honest, it is a close call. Space Dreams. Of course, it's another scrolling shooter. You're a pacifier this time, and the enemies are the contents of a baby's toy box, I guess, if that would include a giant safety pin. Baby Pac-Man loves his giant safety pin. He likes to scrape the sleep from his eyes with it. That's why he doesn't have any eyes anymore. Streamers. You can't jump or attack, only unfurl this long stick to climb up to the next levels. If you touch pretty much anything, you'll take a hit and you can't see anywhere how many hit points you have left though. The enemies are these crazy mimes and clowns that run fast as arse on tiny platforms. Ooh, a bag of money! That gives you one sad face and one less hit point. Well, that's bullshit. Performing artists need to pay the bills. Just because you think a clown isn't a proper job doesn't mean they shouldn't get paid. Although, I'll be honest, this one isn't making me laugh. He's just making me very, very angry. All right, on second thought, screw this guy. He needs to get a proper job. Spread fire. Bubblegum Rosie. This is another unremarkable platformer, but it's kind of funny that this girl doesn't notice spikes going up her skirt. Some enemies you can kill, some of them you can't. It makes no sense. But there is actually quite a sweet story behind this one. According to the developer of this game, in an interview that I will link in the description, this game was based around the girl he was seeing at the time, somebody called Rosie, who always had bubblegum with her. That is kind of adorable, I'm not gonna lie. I'm guessing he never actually showed her the game since they did get married and end up with two kids. Makes me feel like there's hope for me. Nah, who am I kidding? Micro Mike. Bloody hell! 
this is not sped up. This is the actual speed you're supposed to play this game at. Avoid the walls and all sorts of crazy gubbins, all while Mike is speeding along at 200 miles an hour. He clearly bought his carpet from some dodgy bloke around the back of the pub. I think I know the guy, actually. I bought a vacuum off him. Good luck getting a low insurance premium on that thing, Mike. This game is absolutely impossible. And even if you do slow it down in an emulator, the gaps in the walls are too far apart for you to zip between anyway. Mike, slow down. You're gonna have the skin pulled from your face. How is he even going that fast on a magic carpet? Those things aren't known for being turbocharged. I remember this bit from Aladdin. You know the bit where Aladdin flies out of the Cave of Wonders on the magic carpet and most of his internal organs pop out of the sand about three seconds after he does? It was the best part of the film. Underground. You're this squashed muppet thing with a mushroom allergy, wandering about underground where it's all kicking off. What is that? The only way you can get through the levels is by taking advantage of this glitch and use the space next to the ladders to climb up them. What is happening in this room? I don't know if I should be watching this without paying for it first. Rocket Jockey. Oh god, I am so bored. Cowboy in space lassoing space cows. What is this fixation on space? space? Yes, we are now halfway through the games. Come on, let's knuckle down and do it. Not human. No, no, I, I can't, I can't do this. I, no. What, and I cannot stress this enough, the actual bubbling baubles is that. Look at, look, look at it. You're dealing with one of the ugliest sprites ever put in a video game. Look at its feet and taking up half of the screen at all times is this face. This face will haunt your dreams. Why are there so many of them? Is it happy? Is it screaming in pain? Make it stop. Not Human on the Action 52 makes you want to collect therapists like Pokemon cards. Why are the enemies so much better drawn than whatever this guy is? Why are the faces? I'm gonna go and check them out. Oh, they kill me. It's probably for the best. Not Human, by the way, doesn't have a level two. Once you've finished the first level, you just go back to the start of it, which isn't even that easy because the controls are bullshit. Hey, imagine if this guy and the cybermorph where did you learn to fly woman got together. That would be, you know, horrendous. Cry baby. You're a baby with a gun and there's men trying to kidnap you. Okay, that's enough of that one. You don't need any more details. No, no more de- No, shh, shh. Slashers. This one is awful. It's kind of nice to see something different from the platforming or the side-scrolling shooter, but it's the world's worst beat-em-up. Every time an enemy appears, the screen stops and you have to beat them up just to move on. That is, unless you trick the game by not interrupting the bad guy's walking animation. Because if they don't touch you, they just keep walking off the screen. So that's super easy, but then they do reappear when you progress just a couple of frames. So it's a constant task of avoiding these power walking idiots and it is zero fun. It's minus fun. Five levels of this repetitive nonsense, fighting the same enemy at the same intervals in an infinity loop of sheer torture. With that game. No, you can't have pony. Crazy shuffle. You're this tiny thing that needs to avoid these other tiny things. Also, music sounds like a hangover. Music that will give you a hangover. The instruction book says that this is an educational puzzle game. How? I mean, you're in a maze picking up crucifixes. Is it a religious education game? I think the lesson here is that God hates me. Fuzz power. Big footed guy who does not want his hair cut. And I assume that it's adult protective services who have sent out a load of combs and hair dryers to catch him. He loses a bit of hair every time he's hit. He seems happy though. Well, you know what they say about men with big feet who are stalked by sentient hairstyling products? They can f right off. Shooting gal or shooting gallery. Yeah, that makes more sense. 
Oh, yeah. Let's murder something. Shoot panicking lizards, bunnies, teddy bears, shoot them all to hell, you monster. For some reason, the internet thinks that this guy here can never die, which means that technically, the game will never end until you literally die in real life. But that's not true. Our player here can be murdered by the things he's shooting at when from about level three onwards, they glitch out of the shooting window and body you. So there you go. There is a way out, thank God. Not sure what the instruction book is on though, it says you'll get to a final shootout with bad guys and all, but once you clear level 7 by literally just staying in one spot and holding the shoot button, it just goes back to level 1. By the way, I'm not going to show this because I know that some of my viewers are epileptic. Some of the games on Action 52 randomly start up with a flashing screen. It's probably something to do with the resistors or something in the cartridge, I don't know, who cares. But basically, as far as active enterprises are concerned, if you're epileptic, screw you. Lollipops. Oh god, another rubbish platformer. Although this one does feel like it had more effort put into it than any of the other games so far. I kind of like how the enemies burst into bloody confetti. And the player here explodes into balloons when he gets hit. That's a very cheerful way of dying, I like it. It certainly shake up the funeral. There's a lot of different enemies, the music only mildly makes me want to ram tent pegs into my ears. Look at that hit animation. That is especially fluid for the Action 52. I mean, it is bad. It, it really is bad. But it's the least bad so far. Look at the dainty way he runs. This guy is just begging to be cast in a money supermarket advert. Oh god, we're nearly at the end of the second screen. Come on, come on guys, come on. All right, so for a start, which which one of these tiny things am I supposed to be? Oh, I'm oh, I'm this one. Okay. I wanted to be the thing riding on a flapping tongue. Ooh, that's a good line for my plenty of fish profile. Wow, 260 messages already. And that's before I even added that line to my profile. What the hell is going on up there? And why wasn't I invited? And why are you doing whatever it is that you're doing so fast? Why are all the citizens of Evil Empire absolutely going mental? Do they not have jobs to go to? Or is this what they're employed to do, to lose their shit on top of a tower? Because if so, please point me towards the job openings. I've got bills to pay and I would be excellent at doing that. Sombreros. Bloke in a hat walking up a street like this. Can't go on the pavement for some reason, but he's not in any real danger since the cars which are the same size as him blow up with just one shot of his gun. Must be the Firestone tyres. Also, this guy can't get me because of the pavement in the way, so I guess I'll just kill him? There's a couple more levels after this and they're not just in this confined road, but I can't be asked to show them to you. Yes, final game on the second screen, come on. Ooh, another title screen. It's Storm Over the Desert. And yes, we are playing the American heroes, rolling around in a tank and running over people while blowing stuff up. America! Fuck yeah! Ah! Uh, I, I need the instruction book to give me a bit of an explanation before I go outside and punch the first person I see, regardless of whether or not they are a child. Using your tanks, you must avoid the minefields set by the evil Satan Hossein. Oh, God. I mean, we could ask why the enemy tanks are pink, but that's kind of overshadowed by the 20 foot tall Satan Hussein that's traipsing around the battlefield like he owns the place. And if American foreign policy has taught me anything, he, he probably does. What in the absolute bobbins is happening here? This is like if a pro-America game was made by Donald Trump. And there were these huge Saddam Hussein's huge, no one had ever seen anything like it. And me and Saddam, you know, I knew Saddam and he was a big fan of mine. I didn't like him so much. I know the best tanks. Finally, we are on the last screen of games. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Number 37. Mash man. It's just fuzz power with no hair. And also, he walks like this, with his hands in his pockets, because he just does not care. 
and who can blame him when the enemies don't even attempt to attack him and all he has to do is jump over them. If he can see them, that is, what a waste of time. They came. Well, they can go right back, especially when they're part of another rubbish shooter like this. Some Action 52 cartridges crash when you die on this level, which would be a sweet release, especially if it had you literally die. But that's not an issue for the ROM, so I played it just long enough to tell you that it is absolutely not worth playing. It's basically Storm Over the Desert in space, but without the massive Saddam, which honestly really would have been a nice touch. Laser League. Another side-scrolling shooter, oh my god. <laughs> This is another one of the few Action 52 games to actually have a boss battle at the end of the levels, but I'm not going to play this long enough to show you that because I need to spend a bit of time now sitting fully clothed in the shower and crying. Also, what is that thing? Billy Bob. This one is interesting because this guy has hands down the best animation we've seen on this entire cartridge. Even for a non-Action 52 game, he's moving quite nicely. Problem is, the game that he's in uh, sucks. These arrows at the top fall and kill him in just one hit, and they seem to appear at random, so it's kind of hard to plan ahead. Plus, Billy Bob doesn't jump over things unless he's already running, and if the ceilings don't kill him, the fall damage into thin air will. Imagine that on Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, he's tripped over. Sorry, everyone, the Nazis have won. So more often than not, throughout Billy Bob, when the screen switches, suddenly there's a big jump right in front of him. So you really need to be running from the previous screen and then press the jump button the absolute millisecond that the second screen pops up. Otherwise, down you go, mate. Dead. Oh, also, he's got a gun. Which is good for absolutely f all. Now, I know it is possible to get past this first jump because I have managed to do it before, but when I was capturing the footage, I just could not jump at the right time. Screen two, and it's the hardest jump ever. Talk about a difficulty curve, the kind of difficulty curve that would launch you into space. Oh wait, no, please, no, no, not space, no more space games. Let's watch him get an arrow in the head. Oh, oh, that looked painful again, again. Oh man. Billy Bob Shish Kebab, City of Doom. It's a bloke climbing a skyscraper. I was gonna say that I was expecting something cooler given the name, but then I realized that it's a game where there's a guy climbing unassisted up a skyscraper. I mean, that's already pretty badass. Action 52 has just ruined me. If he gets hit enough times by the stuff that's being flung at him, he will turn into an angel. And that also happens if he tries to climb into a window. I don't get it. Why is that bad? Being an angel must be nice. I mean, you can fly away from this game for a start. Bits and pieces. Oh god, please, just do the next girl. Hang on a minute. Why is that werewolf wearing a nappy? Okay, I'm done. I've said what I wanted to say. Next game. Why are so many of these platforming games like this? There's not even any real challenge. It's just a case of bounce over the bad guys. And there we go, there, that's your game, mate. That's, there it is. And the controls are so bad. It's not even mindlessly engaging like the Google Dinosaur is. In fact, I now want to play the Google Dinosaur game. If my internet cuts out right now, I'm not even gonna be mad. I'm gonna play that bad boy for hours because I have been playing the Action 52 and I'm not even sure what counts as a video game anymore. The thing is, what's written in the instruction book strongly suggests that it was gonna be a sort of Tetris game, which would obviously, you know, be far better because Tetris is Tetris, you can't go wrong. Where did this undead party show up? Bleeps and blips. Oh, this is just they came, but with better music and shapes. It looks like if an abstract expressionist painting came to life. Next, it's Manchester, because we just haven't had quite enough crappy platformers. Why is it called Manchester, you ask? Hey, I have no clue. There's lots of places in the world called Manchester, including Tupit that is the north of England where I'm from, but none of these places look like this. 
These things, whatever they are, they come out of nowhere. Our guy here is really slow with the punching and can't really defend himself from more than one thing at a time. And there's these guys, these punks, minding their own business. I guess I'll just mess him up. This really sums up Action 52. You just stood there, minding your own business, trying to have a nice time, and Action 52 comes and punches you in the face with some shitty games. Yeah, I'm getting more Liverpool from this one. Boss. Okay, yeah, where's the boss? Because I need to make a complaint. I'm about to go full on Karen here. Are you the boss? You don't look like a boss. You look like a dude dressed in a crocodile outfit with a gun that you absolutely should not have been able to get a permit for. No, this guy isn't the boss. He's out to beat the boss. So he's the Karen. These pillocks chucking bombs out of their apartment windows need to stop right now before I get flashbacks to living in East London. Oh, for God's sake, I am 45 games into the Action 52 and I've run out of jokes. I don't even know what to say. It's a frog in a fedora. What do you even say about that? <laughs> Will you f off, Jason? I'm trying to have a moment. Dead ant. It's another shooter, but with ants. Yes. <laughs> You're basically fine as long as you don't let any of the enemies get down to the same line as you because you can't shoot off to the side. But at this point, life has no meaning, so who cares? Oh, what? The enemies can shoot horizontally though? Well, that's unfair. This sucks. Just pour boiling water over the entire nest and be done with it. Hambo, you're a pig. Just trying to get up to that doorway up there. The problem is, you often start the level with an enemy that hits you right away. You've only got one hit point, you don't have any lives, and our lad here has zero way to defend himself. This pig could only be more f***ed if it lived with David Cameron. Time warp tickers. Okay, so... Bear with me a minute because I am really fighting the urge. First off, you're a pair of fingers. This is a game where you play as two fingers. It's actually kind of pioneering when you think about it. These didn't start being a main character in games until Hentai came along. So here we are inside your last fever dream. There's this thing here that looks an awful lot like a penis, but he looks happy, so I guess we'll leave him to it. There's no hand that these fingers are attached to. It's just two digits strutting along. It, it what? I have lived in some utter dives in my life, but even the place in East London that I lived in didn't have doorways half up the wall. It did have a power socket right next to the bath though. I digress because please let me digress. Let me talk about anything else at all. I hope at least that these are the index and middle fingers so they can at least dish out a bit of that. The enemies move so fast and are drawn so close that you're not likely to jump out of the way of something that's coming at you from this part of the screen. Because once again, you can't crouch. Like I said, that is a problem with all of the Action 52 platformers, but it's especially bad in this one. When you kill the enemies with your dinky little flick, they reveal the word time. Whoa. Wow, I have wasted my life. Same thing happens when your fingers get killed. That is not a sentence I thought I ever would say. Everything in this game is consumed by the concept of time, which begs the question, why am I wasting my time on this game? Jigsaw. Now this is the second game that doesn't work on the released carts. It's basically an even worse version of Alfredo and the Fettuccinis, but with power tools. Oh god, this is so bad. Am, am I in hell? What is it with tradespeople in Action 52 not being able to control their own tools? Me personally, if I hire a mechanic or whatever, I won't be hiring them if there's spanners and envelopes going absolutely mental in their workshop. That is page one of hiring a trusty tradesperson. Plus, weirdly, this is another game that's got an entirely different description in the instruction book. In there, it says that it's going to be a picture rearranging game. You know, that would have been way better. Anything would have been way better. An episode of Mrs. Brown's Boys would have been way better. Oh, no, I'll take that back. Ninja Assault is basically slashes, but with a ninja who attacks by brandishing his sticks like this. Oh my god, I'm being attacked by a seagull. Get off my fish and chips, you bastard. Go back to Brighton. Ha! 
Bloody hell! Jesus! These dogs come out of nowhere at top speed, absolutely kamikazing into you. How can you defend against that? The time it takes to go from off screen into your damn intestines is the same time it takes for this idiot to brandish his sticks. Finally, it's game 51, it's Robbie and the robots. It's bad, it's unremarkable. It's really awkward to play. And our main character here looks like Johnny Bravo during the trying to reconnect with old high school girlfriends on Facebook phase of his life. But you know what the best thing is about this game? It's the last game! That is, if you don't count number 52. And originally, in the prototype stage of Action 52's development, game number 52 was just going to be all of the hardest levels from each of the previous 51 games. So technically, Robbie and the Robots is the last game. Technically. Except no, of course not. The final released version just had to have one final game to really rub Sol into the wound. And of course, I'm about to play it and I'm about to make a video about it. Listen, I am very, very drunk, but I need to go and have a long lie down before I tackle game number 52, the Cheetah Man. Of course, I deserve a video of its own. So if you excuse me, I'm gonna go and sit fully clothed in the shower and cry. Join me next time.